hear where it is, the, like the, um, what is it, that bunny that you, what, what is it, the, um, Energizer Bunny, Energizer Bunny, that's Hubert. Just an energy ball, but uh, he's very passionate, you know, about what he believes. Um, loves the kids, loves the kids. I mentor a wide range of individuals, uh, everyone from uh, young people to older people. Uh, right now, I'm, uh, I'm working with high school students. He pours a truckload of energy into them, trying to haul them to this thing, to that thing, all with the attempts of inspiring them to keep that light twinkling to, for to make it ignite and explode. And for that, I ain't got a number of good things to say about him. He seems like, you know, he's hell-bent. Like, it, there's not enough hours in the day to do, to try to help other people. I love the smell of napalm in the morning, you know. I just, I just tease. I mean, he's been hospitalized, I want to say about five times that I know of, because, you know, he tries to kind of keep it from us. It's just weird, because I don't see him as a sickly person, but he is. Uh, unfortunately, he really is. He is totally devoted to seeing that young people improve and not travel some of the roads that he has gone down, because he knows that they are not the right way. Throughout the week, sometimes it depends on uh, what's going on in the community or nationally that I may be inspired to wear a particular shirt uh, protesting or wanting to make a uh, statement uh, to some degree. You know, wherever we are, you know, everybody knows him or talking to him or he knows somebody that can help somebody with something if they come up with a problem. I see students walking the streets and I'm always wondering, we failed that child. We failed that child. I can't fail you. So every day I'm working to hold these adults accountable for making sure that you are successful. Well, you know, in just a few hours, the group of men that is that is with me right now, they're going to be greeting, greeting students here at Flint Northwestern High School. Now, take a look. I want you to meet involved dads. Now, these group of men are mentors. They are all Flint natives, and they have one goal in mind. Hubert Roberts, what is that goal? To encourage and motivate our children to excellence. Our purpose is really to celebrate, and as they're coming in, we want to give them a positive faith on what their life could be, and just to encourage them to have a good day, a good week, and a good life. A lot of the kids, they come from economically challenged backgrounds. Their household, unfortunately, sometimes they'll have to be laced with a certain amount of drug use or inappropriate behavior. There's some young people, they really don't have male people that they can connect with. We, we've heard a lot of stories, a lot of fathers missing in action. Some of the fathers there, incarcerated, some there's been disagreements with the mothers and there's divorce and so but one way or another they don't have a male that's in their life so we try to be that i first met mr robertson at uh open gym uh, when i was playing basketball he was teaching young boys uh, up there like about black history and all that so but some of the boys didn't want to sit up there and listen to what he had to say and so uh, I sat there and listened to all of it, and so he, he gave me his number to write it down, so I wrote it down, and uh, I started calling him, and from there on out, we started hanging out and, you know, like he said, going to water distribution and going to some of the uh, mentor things and doing a lot of stuff, and I think I've been having a successful life since, since then. History is indicative of who we are today. We use history to share with our young people what others have done, not so much that they are going to copy what they did, but they can recreate and even take what others have done and take it further. 
See, again, the whole roadmap to life is about repetition and understanding your environment and then improving on that environment. So we use history in every form from the struggle of being enslaved in this country to the oppression and the brutality of, of enslavement. And we also use it to show the celebration of people that have supposedly been dealt a serious blow, knocking them out, that they, we have been resilient. And because of your ancestors, there is no question if you can't overcome anything that people put before you. I won't, I won't be on the honor roll. I won't be on the honor roll for uh, without his help or support, without to do my work and stuff. And so, uh, it's just nice. We're trying to get our young people and older people to think outside of the box because they have been cultured to believe a certain way about themselves. Okay, what we call this is our student awareness initiative. And what our goal was to um, allow our young men to uh, experience going to a, a prison. And uh, they were able to talk to uh, 10 inmates. And also we have plans to take them to Michigan State. One of the goals is, is asking which campus would they like to be a part of. Either the prison campus or the college campus. My dad and I, we've been, just always been close ever since I can remember. I never really knew the extent of the things that he did um, until I started meeting, you know, kids that he's worked with and other people that he worked with and, and you know, my stepmom and all the different things she was telling him to do because he's always gone, he's always doing something, but that's always been dad. He's always been involved in something, so, you know, when I finally kind of got the gist of what he was doing, I was like, dad, that is so amazing that you can actually reach out and, and touch kids and he tries on every level. I mean even with you know I'm I have other siblings that's not his children and even with them he's always been involved in their lives. Friday on December 18, 2015 we took a trip to the prison facility in Lapeer. This is what I learned. I learned that jail is not a good place. I know when I grow up I don't not want to make any bad decisions that might ruin my life or get me killed. Now the whole time he was on our way up there, I was just thinking how this is going to be. I mean, I think I was thinking like this is going to be some beyond scare straight stuff. <laughs> now when we made it to the prison, I just caught this feeling like I just didn't feel comfortable. I remember walking in and being told we had to get searched, and I was thinking to myself like, dude. You know we're on a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to go because you wouldn't see family. Can't watch TV. Can't talk to and joke around. Play with other people like you usually do. Now the prisoners turned out to be cool, but they gave us knowledge. Knowledge that if you were smart, you would take it, you would take that knowledge and put it in your head. I got some best advice from what you would consider some of the worst people. Drug dealers, drug addicts, alcoholics, thieves. As cons, even murderers. I truly feel that every every one of those prisoners that talk to us deserve a second chance. Some of them have been in there since they were kids. That trip was a blessing to me. And I learned a lesson. I'm gonna be a good role model for all the younger kids and younger siblings. Right. <clears throat> I was about um like eight or nine, I guess. Just one day he was there, then one day he wasn't there. It was like a couple months and I didn't know what was going on. And my mother trying to, you know, I guess shield me for whatever reason. So till I finally get the gist of what was going on and then figured out he was in prison. So that was, that was a tough time for all of us. So like I said, he was there, <laughs> then he wasn't there. Like in, like at nine. You know, he spent 17 years in prison, which was hard. I mean, this action that I did totally affected my family, my intimate family, uh, and externally, a lot of people couldn't believe that I did this. Uh, Well, 
the relationship with my son, he's actually a doctor. I have, uh, I have three sons and two daughters, and my son, little Hubert, or Hubert the third, um, because I went to prison, uh, which is no excuse, but his mom used to bring him to see me while I was incarcerated. But for some reason, she made a choice to separate he and I from a relationship. Now, uh, the dynamics, once he turned 18, it was on him. I continued to write him while I was incarcerated. He stopped writing me, but specifically with him, uh, it's his choice. He's grown. Again, I extended myself to him. We just had a family reunion. He didn't show up for our family reunion. He nor his mother. And again, I thought that was unacceptable, but once a person is grown, they can make their own decision. So basically our relationship now is just one-sided. I continue to reach out to him. He has chosen not to connect. I can't tell you why. Uh, that's the best answer I can give you. When I was incarcerated, I found out that a lot of the young people that were coming into the prison system was uh, being mistreated, uh, being raped, and a lot of things were going on. So I got with some other guys and was trying to protect some of these young men from being molested. How his spirit didn't get broken in there, I have no idea. I think it's a combination of, of my total experience as far as uh, where I come from. Uh, my experiences of being incarcerated had brought me to this point in my life today as far as st standing up and stepping up and being committed to make a different difference or impact other children's lives. Because it is interesting. I have, as you can see up in Northwestern, when we was at Northwestern, I have children that I've worked with that pretty much relate to me like I'm their parent because I've developed that relationship with them. And I think some of that is because of not having a relationship with my children. I think a lot of it is because of that. Well, my father, he wasn't, he wasn't even in my life since I was born. And so, ever since then, my mama tell me that uh, he, 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 been, he been gone. And to, 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 turns out he was in prison because I guess he um, a rash, sexual rash, a, a girl, a, a little girl, so. I believe that the students, you have to establish a relationship with them, and I think that he has established a relationship with them. A, a relationship of trust is very important. I believe that the students respond to him. I believe that the students share things with him that they may not share with, with you know, with other people. So this is like a solace for them. And he is like that person that, I, that they know that they can go to and actually sit down and discuss things with. What we try to do is instill into the young people the future of tomorrow. Decisions that are being made by them has some discipline to where they're going in life. Nevertheless, the things that we try to instill in them is to be attentive and to get an education, to move forward. They're not doing this for us, nor are they doing this for their parents, but for themselves, that they may become productive citizens of the community and to learn part of their history as to who they are and not what they are. Every decision that y'all make, I need you guys to understand this, everything you decide to do will affect you tomorrow and the rest of your life. So you guys were excellent. Give everybody a piece of candy. Give everybody a piece of candy. We're improving. We are improving, and I'm glad to say that. We have a positive narrative that we're pushing out there. Um, we exceeded our en enrollment target this year, I'm excited to say. Um, we have um, increased early childhood seats in the district. You mentioned a grant. Yeah, so um, Southwestern, we won a $5 million school improvement grant for Southwestern this past summer. That's and so good really news. Excited, very excited to see. Here you have a man who has been to prison, who um, don't have no reason to go back, to reach back to any of these kids. I mean, like, there was no reason, you know, the way we would see it, but 
hey, God put him on that path, and it's like he went after it and meant it. You know, he didn't just go show up one time or because uh, press was going to be there or because, I mean, he was putting in hours like a man that was being paid for this job. And as far as I know, he's never been paid to do this work. And he's consistent. And with our youth, that's what they need more consistency. taking them under my wing and they are definitely like my son because that's the kind of relationship that they feel comfortable talking and sharing a lot of things that they hold very dear that are very private and now they see they can trust me with that knowledge I think it makes for a better relationship I want you all to start thinking about how you see your future, okay? And more importantly, how you're gonna get there. What I want you all to do is draw what you want in life. It reminded me of something that my grandmother used to tell me all the time, you know? If you see it, you can achieve it. If you believe it, you know, and you visualize things, they'll come to you. My name is Deshaunna Brown. Okay, Ms. Brown, go with it. <laughs> First time I'm going to do it high school, go first. Then I'm going to go to the Marines. Mm. <laughs> and the Marines, they just started accepting women. Mm. So I'll be one of the first ones to go to the Marines. Mm. And then I'm going to go to college, go to Ferris State, get my associate's, my bachelor's degree, and I'm going to become a nurse. I'm graduating high school this year. You know, I'm going to college. I went to attend Ferris State University right now, and I want to study business and finance, um, but the, and I get my bachelor degree. Once I get my bachelor degree, I want to have, I want to work for a business in a finance department that deal with money and different things like that. And I also want to save up and invest money for like a, a, a daycare or a, a foster care or something like that. And after that, <laughs> I have my own house, um, a five-bedroom house with two kids and a wife and I want to be married. I just got to ask, you, my final question. What kind of car is that? Is that that new BMW? Is that that Okay. Look, hey, that's my We've brought Flint Northwestern High School kids to MSU's campus to expose them to a college environment and sort of inspire them. 